Hey everyone, Scott here with Adventure Further, and we are today in beautiful Moab, Utah. We uh, just got done with EJS 2024, and we're gonna have a bunch of videos here for you guys to see of Rocky Wheeling. So I figured why not, after it's been trail tested, do a walk around video finally of this build that we completed and absolutely love it. It has been phenomenal. Ashley even got to wheel it. She loved it. Hopefully it doesn't end up in her hands instead of mine. And even my daughter Allison got to drive it. And so it has been a true beast. So let's start off in the front here. We have a America's Most Wanted 505 engine swap. Uh, this is a V8 392 and it's a Hemi. And with that, it's mated with an 8HP 75 transmission. And then we still are running the four to one Rubicon transfer case. With that, we're actually going to the Fusion 4x4 axles. I would say the next thing that you gotta go after, after having the V8 power, is the axles. We gotta make sure that we got enough juice to spin these tires and also not wreck axle shafts and drive shafts and stuff like that. So we ended up doing the Fusion 4x4 80 rear, half inch uh, thick wall, four inch tube, 1550 axle drive shafts, and then up front here, if you come around, this is what is just absolutely phenomenal. We did the Super Kingpin 60. And what that means is we actually have reed knuckles. We have, uh, it's a kingpin, so there's no ball joints. And then to top it off, we got a two and a half ton steering. We have 1550 axle shafts. They're F550 Cs, which instead of having a three quarter ton, we have the F550, which is even thicker and stronger. Along with that, we have 1550 U-joints, they're Brannock U-joints, and they are very, very strong. And let me tell you, I have not babied this thing whatsoever. It has been beaten hard, <laughs> and, uh, and it has not failed us yet. We've been to multiple parks, we've been to Trail Hero, as you've seen in the videos in the past. We'll actually link that video in this video here for you guys to get, get a feel of what it looked like. Um, but then, we actually, right here in the front, we have a motorbuilt Tomahawk bumper, and we chose to do this, the low stinger on it. Then we have our 12S Xeon worn winch with our Factor 55 fair lead. And from there, you can't miss it, are the unbelievably bright Tyree lighting. We'll have a link in the description for these. Uh, we work closely with them. We have ran other lights in the past but as of right now, nothing compares to these. They're built right here in the US. They're actually in our home state of Wisconsin that they are actually put together and assembled. If you guys wanna get a set of these lights and check them out for yourself, go to foxtaillights.com and we'll have a link in the description below where you guys can check these out. So not only do we have the three 1313 lights on the front bumper, we have their 1010 model, that are on the A pillars here. And then we also have the small 0606 lights is what they're calling them that actually shine down our tire for night wheeling. And the best of all, the absolute best of all, is their new light bar that they just released. This was the prototype. We were able to get it on our vehicles. We have it on all three Jeeps right now, soon to be four. And it is super bright for night wheeling and kind of Baja and getting across the desert and being able to see in the middle of the night. So check them out for sure. Coming around, we actually have one of our favorite tires that we love to run, we have it on multiple rigs, is the Mickey Thompson Pro XS 43 inch DOT spec tire. What that means is it's actually a road rated tire. We're driving on the streets and it's actually meant for it. We have those wrapped with a KMC wheel, double, uh, it's a single bead lock with uh, the Apex quick deflate valve stems. So when we get to the trail, not only can we get there and get aired down very fast, we, we can out, get on the trail immediately. Uh, we don't have to get the whole hoses out all the way around, hook them all up and try to get to there. All we do is take our actual air gauge and as it's airing down, we can have it on there so we know exactly what we're aired down to within 45 seconds. We'll have a 43 inch tire aired down from 25 PSI to five PSI. So if you guys wanna see some of that, Check that out. We'll have a link in the description below for that too. Apex Design USA, and they have amazing valve stems. Then uh, we kind of went with Moto Built on a lot of this build. We love their products. They're very high quality at a very reasonable price. 
These are their new Highline fenders. So we ran these because at full articulation, this tire gets within about a half of an inch of this fender, believe it or not. You got this large gap here, but this tire will get this that, that close. So we wanted to get as much ground clearance as possible. So we went with the Motobilt Highlines. Coming around to here are the sway locks. Sway locks for on-road and off-road use. Uh, we have ran Curry anti-rocks in the past. Yes, the anti-rocks are well proven for off-road use, but we also like to drive our rigs on-road and I'm kind of a speed demon. So I like to go fast and that also means in the corners. And with this, this is actually better than factory sway bar. There's no actual rubber bushings for the sway there. And so they have a double, um, sway bar for off-road and on-road use. I would definitely check them out, highly recommend them. We also have one of their prototypes. They should be releasing them any day for the rear and we'll get to that in a little bit, but we do have their front and rear sway bars and both of them operate the same way. So um, definitely give that a check. Then we're running our Evo double throwdown kit. What that means is we have our standard two and a half inch coilover, with our two and a half inch triple bypass shock. And so when we're going through the whoops, once again, like to go fast, it's kind of why we did it. Um, this thing really soaks up the bumps and going down the trail real fast. So this is their double throwdown kit, as you can see, is all adjustable. Um, I can adjust the pressures and stuff like that just with the knob. And definitely one of the things that we didn't do on our other gladiators, so we wanted to make sure to do it on this one. And it's definitely been proven and we love it. Coming around here, we actually um, went with rock slide engineering steps. Most people will say, come on, you have a hard car rock crawler and you're running a pull down step. So with these steps here, you can actually open the door and they will flip down so it's easier to get into. This thing ha is approximately like a between a four and a half and a six inch lift and getting in and out of it isn't the easiest. So having those steps definitely works but you're able to turn them off. And so like with the trail right now, we have them turned off just because we just got off of Pritchett Canyon here in Moab and didn't want those steps coming out while we're on the trail. Coming to the back, making it back here. Here is the rear sway lock that we, I was talking about in the front. It, it's as easy as flipping this lever over to actually have this locked in. The minute you actually even out the vehicle, it'll automatically slide this in and you're fully engaged with your dual rate sway bar. And so that's how easy it is to engage and disengage. Really love that. Bob Bed, uh, we actually were in the shop and were able to cut off 14 and a half inches of the rear frame. Some people obviously might say, now you just wasted a bed, why didn't you buy a Wrangler? Well, I could tell you right now, having the wheelbase that I have so far, 95% of the trails that we've been on, this thing has been amazing. It is nicknamed the school bus, it is nicknamed the farm tractor, it is just a workhorse for pulling people off the trail. We did a recovery on the trail the other night and uh, Rocky here was actually the toll pig and got some other people off the trail. And so with having the bob bed and cutting that off, the departure angle for the rear where a lot of the standard gladiators were wheeling, they actually bottom out on the rear of the bed constantly. Until this trip, we've wheeled four different off-road parks and I've never hit the rear bumper. We finally at this trip hit the rear bumper. That being said, if I would have had 18 inches onto the back of here, that's how much further the standard bed and rear bumper would have been. Um, I would have been dropping on that thing 24 seven, especially on all these black and purple trails that we've been hitting out here. And so we actually total saved 18 inches with Motobilt's rear bumper um, combo. And I have just over a four foot bed in the back, which works absolutely wonderful for us. We have our power tank for our air lockers mounted right here to the bed. That is a 20 pounder. And uh, we've been using it all week, airing up tires, and I still have yet to use it all. So um, that's become something that uh, is very handy and useful for us. And then we actually have our fridge in the back. So if you check this out, we can actually have the drop down tailgate yet. And we have our Dometic fridge mounted in the very back. It's sitting here, beverages are nice and cold and food is in here and everything. So this has been one thing that we've put in all of our vehicles and 
works really great for us. And then we have like the drop down table to set stuff on tools, whatever we need. And we're the only thing that we're really going to add on to here is the uh, pack out system. Instead of having all the tools and the stuff in the very back of the Jeep, where if something bad were to happen and we would actually roll, I don't want to have those tools flying around. So we're actually going to be probably putting some pack outs in the very back of here to alleviate anything bouncing around in the very back seats that could potentially hit us in the head on a rollover. And the reason we bring that up is the other day um, there was a gal that uh, went up Chewy on Pritchett and she ended up rolling and everything that was in the back seat. She had floor jacks in the back seat. She had tools in the back seat and everything. Luckily, luckily she didn't get hit in the head with any of it but it was all back there and it all got ejected from the vehicle. And that's something that uh, after seeing it and firsthand in person, we don't want that to happen. All right, so here's the Dana 80 rear end that I was talking about. Very heavy duty, four inch axle tube, like I said earlier, half inch wall with 1550 axle shafts. It has been an absolute beast of a rear end. We've had some other axles in the past that have not held up to it. Um, when we bought this Jeep, it actually, we tried UD60s underneath it. Uh, that did not work for us. On the first trip, I grenaded the rear end. The locker did, got destroyed. And uh, when I pulled the diff cover, it all fell right on the ground. And so I chose to go to something extreme duty where the worry of that happening was very slim. And so we went with this Dana 80 from Fusion 4x4. If you guys are looking for something, we can put that link down below. Wonderful axles, really been great. We also did the Rock Crawler Silverback kit. And what that is, is as you can see here, there's no bar going across the back. That bar that goes across the back is actually a track bar. The track bar holds the axle center in the rear of the vehicle so that when you're driving down the road or articulating, it actually doesn't swing out and slide to side to side. Well, with Rock Crawler, if you check out their kit, we have their front long arm parallel kit in the front, and then the rear, they have it's still a short arm, but they actually were able to semi triangulate the rear end. So I was able to pull that track bar out and get rid of it. I cut it off altogether, and we actually use their arms on the rear here. And so the rear arms actually hold the axle centered in the vehicle. So when I'm going up an obstacle, the axle just pivots right in place compared to if you have a track bar where it mounts up high to the frame and then down to the axle. If you are going to the right, that axle will actually shift right and you'll fall off of objects that you're trying to crawl over. And so this keeps us nice and planted centrally on the trail and on the rocks that we're trying to go up. So that actually on our other Gladiator is potentially going to happen at some point with Rock Crawler. We're gonna work with them and do the same exact thing. We do have an 80 axle in the rear of that one as well, um, but we didn't get rid of the track bar and it's something we tested on here and now that we have it, love it. Um, I would recommend it for anybody that's able to do it. Definitely look at doing it and we'll put that link below as well in the comment or in the description so that you guys have a place to go to to look at getting that installed for yourself too. It does require a truss going over the rear axle and Rock Crawler does have their own um, bolt-on truss if you don't wanna weld it like we did here. If you're not comfortable doing that, they have a bolt-on version. So that is something you guys can do. And then underneath as well, we went with Motobilt once again. They have a full skid plate system. So from front to back, even with my 392 in there, I had just a little bit of um, cutting that I actually had to just trim. I didn't actually have to redo any of the brackets or anything like that. Everything bolted up real nicely to the motor mounts, but their, their skid plate system for the Gladiator did work for our 392. And it is definitely got tested on this trip as well. The skid plates are pretty much pounded front to back, but we've had no failures whatsoever. Bolts are actually staying tight and haven't loosened up. Um, I know that's a common thing with a lot of people, but we've had really, really good luck with their with their stuff. So highly recommend Motobilt. And uh, like even like here, they even went to the extra mile. I still have my factory backup camera in this bobbed bed and they put it right here. So if I need to see something that's behind me, it's right there and it's amazing. So definitely uh, give them a, a look for something like that. And then we actually threw, um, they have their taillight kit 
which comes standard in their bed. We were wheeling with them here and we're actually thinking about upgrading their light, rear light package. They have a new off-road only light that goes into here that is something that we did not opt for, but after seeing it here was amazing. And so we're probably gonna do another upgrade. Go figure. So, um, but then on the sides here, we even have more light. We actually have uh, flush mount lights here for when we're going down the trail at night, I pretty much can see around this whole entire thing. It is like a spaceship going, <laughs> going around at night. So having the extra lights around this thing is absolutely great to have. Um, and then coming inside, just a few quick things here. We have our last fit switches. So let's open this up here. It's really dusty and dirty, obviously, because we've been wheeling the heck out of it this whole trip. But instead of the Rubicon switches down below there, we actually opted to do last fit, L-A-S-F-I-T. And so it replaces the Rubicon switches and gives me two extra auxiliary switches to run lights and stuff like that. And one of the best things is this, having our magnetic mic mount here for our radio, our radio plugs into here and as you can see, you don't see any radio inside of here. It's actually in the glove compartment. And so we have it actually mounted inside the glove compartment and it's hidden out of sight, out of mind and is very nice. So we opted for that. A few upgrades that are gonna be coming probably very soon we, because now we're kind of making this more of a dedicated rig. We're thinking about switching some seats out, thinking of doing some PRP comp seats. It'll keep me nicely stabilized inside the seat instead of bouncing around the Rubicon seats. Do some harnesses just for safety. Waiting for Motobilt. They're talking about doing a cage for the Gladiator. So that is something I'm very, very interested in because safety off-road is number one and we want to make sure that we have that. So I want to really get a cage put into this thing so I don't have any worries if I roll over. This thing gets crushed with me and potentially my kids in it. So we want to make sure that everybody's safe. So that's kind of some of the upgrades that we're looking at doing. Maybe down the road do a rear long arm as well, but I don't want to move the fuel tank. So the best part about that rock crawler kit is you get to keep the factory fuel tank, which is super shocking that you can semi triangulate it and keep the factory fuel tank. And so that's something that I want to end up keeping. I don't want to put in the bed. A lot of people are putting them in the bed, but like I said, I want to put pack outs in there or cooler in there. And I just want to have everything set the way it is. And I kind of want to drive it around town too. It's a blast to drive having that V8. So I want to say that that's probably not going to happen for quite a while. Something's drastically going to have to change before we do that. So thanks guys for watching. Um, check out some of our other videos. We got some wheeling videos with Rocky in it, with the Major in it. And uh, if you guys would please like and subscribe our channel, we would love to have you guys watching along as our family travels across the country and either rock crawls or overlands. Our Alaska video is going to be releasing here very shortly and that is an overlanding video where we traveled five weeks cross country um, as a family uh, or across the state of Alaska I should say. And so stay tuned and uh, we have a lot more stuff coming for you.